fascism, a political ideology characterized by a one-party dictatorship, the retention of private ownership of the means of production under centralized governmental control, nationalism, racism, and the glorification of war. The homeland of fascist ideology was Italy, and it was led by Benito Mussolini. It was also prevalent internationally in several other countries, such as Hitler's Germany, Franco Spain, and Tojo's Japan. This brings us to fascism's most prominent leaders, Benito Mussolini and Adolf Hitler. Benito Mussolini was born on 29th July, 1883. He was initially a member of the Socialist Party. However, when he rejected the Socialist commitment to neutrality and urged Italian entry to World War I, he was expelled. He founded the Fascists in Milan in March 1919. With no clear goal in mind other than self-advancement, Mussolini led his fascists on an ultra-nationalistic course. They remained on the political periphery, however, until he led his march on Rome, where the black-shirted paramilitary street gangs called the Squadristi established the fascists as the most important political party in Italy. This succeeded, and Mussolini was later named prime minister. Adolf Hitler was born on April 20th, 1889. He was a soldier in World War I, after which he returned to Munich, where he immersed himself in radical politics. In 1919, he joined the Nazis, a party adopted as an ultra-nationalistic program that denounced both the Treaty of Versailles and the Weimar Republic. Two years later, he emerged as its leader. In 1924, Hitler led a failed coup d'etat and was imprisoned. He was released from jail later that year. The Nazis gained popularity when the Great Depression struck Germany in late 1929. When the economy collapsed, the Germans, who weren't entirely content with the Democratic Republic, turned to political extremism, granting the Nazis power in the Reichstag. Consequentially, Hitler was named Chancellor in 1933. How did the seemingly oppressive regime gain power? Well, coming out of World War I, Europe was in economic turmoil, and poverty rose among the distressed citizens, leading to the popularity of extreme ideologies as a way out of their dire state. In addition to that, Italy and Germany were devastated by the results of the Treaty of Versailles. On the one hand, Italy fought with the Allies and didn't get a share of the land they won. On the opposing end of the Versailles Treaty was Germany, who was forced to concede territories and demilitarize the Rhineland. The war guilt clause, its mandatory reparation payments, and the limitations on the German military were particularly burdensome in the minds of most Germans, and the revision of the Versailles Treaty represented one of the platforms that gave radical right-wing parties in Germany, including Hitler's Nazi party, credibility to mainstream voters in the 1920s and early 1930s, promises to rearm, to reclaim German territory, particularly in the East, to demilitarize the Rhineland and to regain prominence again amongst the European and world powers stoked ultra-nationalist sentiment and helped average voters to overlook the more radical tenets of the Nazi ideology. What did the, the fascistic regimes of Mussolini and Hitler give rise to? Well, Hitler achieved notable economic and diplomatic successes during the first five years of his rule. He substantially revived the economy. Unemployment, so pivotal in bringing him to power, had dropped from 6 million to 1 million in less than five years. This was at a time when the US was still wallowing in the depression. National production and income also doubled. Mussolini wanted to advance the economic state of Italy and his plan was based on a twofold approach. Attacking the power of the trained unions and therefore controlling the workers and setting Italy targets. For the attempt to get Italy on the road to economic prosperity, Mussolini introduced the three battles, the battle for land, the battle for lira, and the battle for grain. Hitler and Mussolini's regimes were not all rainbows and butterflies. For one, Italy's OVRA, secret police, arrested a number of opponents. Mussolini implemented his regime through fear and deception. Both Hitler and Mussolini censored and controlled the radios and the newspapers. In addition to that, Hitler's racist approach led to the Holocaust, one of the biggest crimes of our time. However, it was not until 1938 
after Mussolini had moved close to Hitler, that the Italians also began to discriminate against the Jews. Fascism did not decline until World War II. In 1938, Mussolini created an alliance with Hitler and in 1940 made a decision to start a war against Britain and France. Italy, however, was not ready for war. Three years later, Italy started to suffer from food shortages and began to lose almost every battle. As soon as King Emmanuel was back to power, Mussolini was jailed. He was released two months later. He then made an agreement with Hitler to set up a new regime known as the Italian Social Republic that was nothing more than a Nazi puppet state. In 1945, Mussolini was executed, and this was the fall of fascism in Italy that created even more economic frustration during World War II. Nazism in Germany did not fall until their ultimate defeat in World War II.